Last time on Data Archaeology, we looked at this 300 megabyte Seagate drive from about 1986 to 1987. Couldn't find hardly any information inside the drive, but we found that the drive has a lot of issues, but perhaps could be usable in an old DOS machine. So it's good to keep around. The only other two big drives I have right now are these two Seagate drives. Well, b besides the SD506 from my Apple Lisa, but that's uh, the information on there is probably a little too unique to really go digging around on it right now. Also, the SD506 was not only the first hard drive ever made for consumers, but also it has a really weird interface. I'm going to have to look into that a little later. But for now, the main hard drives I have are these two Seagates. They are both from the mid to late 90s, actually, and they have a lot more capacity than I would have ever expected to find in this form factor of a hard drive. This one's 23 gigabytes, and this one's 47 gigabytes. You could install Windows 7 on both of these if you wanted. The main issue with these, though, is that they have surface mount components, and the components are really tall, and they're facing the outside. So that means that as they're kicking around in junk drawers and stuff like that, the capacitors get broken off. And that's happened with both of these. Thankfully, though, I managed to get the ones that had the least amount of capacitors broken off. Because, like, some of the ones at Weird Stuff Warehouse had entire chips cracked off. It's like, no, that, that's not going to work if you have an entire chip missing. But if you just have one component like that one right there missing, I can easily replace that with another capacitor or resistor or whatever it is. Similar to what I've done on this 47 gigabyte one. I replaced one of these service mount capacitors with just a big clunky capacitor, but it seems to do the job well. Unfortunately, I think there's still a few more bad traces and broken solder joints and also at least one missing component on this 23 gigabyte hard drive. So let's look at the 47 gigabyte hard drive. I believe this one should be working now. Unfortunately, they gave me this weird SCSI connector on here. Not the normal SCSI connector that I'm used to using right now. So I had to go out and get another card. I actually talked them down in price, so I got the card for free and only paid $5 for the cable. Thankfully, this card is actually still an Adaptec card. So that means it still uses the same BIOS and little inter user interface and stuff as the other card I've been using. I'll pop this one in here. Then we'll take this hard drive. And of course, I want to have this upside down because I would hate, I would just hate to ruin that capacitor somehow. The top does look pretty cool, though. Have it like so. With this on here. These SCSI connectors are just too big. And they put this power connector too close. Man. The connector cannot go all the way in because this connector is too big. It is so big and so close that I even had to cut a little clip off the side of this Molex connector just so it could fit in. That's some bad design on Seagate's part. Because I, why can't they just move it over a centimeter? That's all I ask. They did it on here. They did that nicely. Oh, well. But that should be all connected up. Let's see. Oh, it looks like this SCSI card is actually able to hold or interface with more SCSI drives. That's quite a bit, actually, on this one. The Seagate SD446452W. Verify disk media. Let's let it go. I love the sound of this. It actually is quite quiet compared to the, a lot of the other drives. It just sounds very like a pure resonant sound.
Oh, look at that. Disk verification complete. That is really good. So we are now on Ubuntu. And I believe this... Yep, 47 gigabyte volume. That should be it. Not displaying anything. Contents unknown UFS one. That's interesting. So I'm trying different ways to look into a UFS file system, and pretty much a lot of the methods that I've seen on the internet are not seeming to work. I've spent a couple hours on it though, and I, I kind of really don't think there's going to be much on a Unix or Linux machine anyway. I'm mostly interested in data for like Windows and DOS machines because those are would be like games and photos and music and stuff that you can actually use. This kind of stuff would usually be just like large corporations, databases, and some people playing around on Linux. So yeah, I think it might, might be better to just go ahead and format this drive and try to do something useful with it and see what kind of benchmark it has. It doesn't really seem to be finishing on formatting it or showing any progress at all. So I'm going to try to stop it. Hmm, it's giving errors. Was not able to format. Well, I said let's boot back up into Windows XP and see if we can format this drive on there. Because Linux was having a lot of issues. So here we are on Windows XP, and I would like to try a program I've used before called Recuva. Now, in order to use Recuva, you have to either have your hard drives in a known file format or have it as raw. And I think this hard drive is kind of just all messed up now, because when I try to do this, it just gives errors. So. Let's try and format the drive first, but we'll quick format it. So that means that we won't, we won't actually overwrite any of the files on there, or at least not many. We'll, we'll just be changing the file system, and that might be able to work, I'm not really sure. Well... Huh. Hmm, it'll be low level formatting. Okay, so it's been two hours and it's not working at all. So now it's not coming up at all in Disk Manager on Windows XP. This is getting worse and worse. This hard drive is, man, is burning up. That is almost, I don't think I could hold it for more than like five seconds just because of how hot it's getting. I do not know what's going on with this thing. This is weird. Now, one idea I have is maybe because this thing cannot plug in all the way, it's causing some connection issues. So I'm going to see if I can break off this 
chunk of metal and make it connect. There we go, it can fit all the way. So now this is fitting in there nicely. And I looked through it again, and I looked through the manual again. They have the manual for this on the Seagate website. And I believe all the jumpers are correct. This hard drive is getting extremely hot. I guess it's designed to be in a rack of other hard drives with airflow going around them. I let it cool down for about a half hour and it's, it's a reasonable temperature now. Let's try again. So I went for a little bicycle ride and I set this fan to keep this hard drive cool. And I am surprised even this little amount of airflow has kept this thing so cool. But compared to what it was before, because before it was almost too hot to touch. So yeah, it looks like this is made to have adequate airflow inside of a server system. But the thing is, I've left it for five hours and it still hasn't finished low level formatting. So it says may take from one minute to several hours. I don't even hear this thing ticking, so I don't think it's doing jack shit. So that did not go very well, but I think I have one last thing to try. The Seagate repair tools that they have or whatever. We'll see if this works. Okay, so C Tools Enterprise. Oh, it's detected it. So this one has had 64,801 hours on. That is a lot of use. It is quite old. Made in 1998. Hmm. That's all the information for this drive. Oh, I hear it going. It looks like it is formatting. Nice. So it's the next morning, and let's see how it went. It's going pretty slow, so it may take another like five hours. I don't know how long it's going to take. Oh, formats complete. Ah, oh, it says format failed. Well, fuck. I th am getting kind of tired of this hard drive. I've been spending a day and a half on it, and I think it's pretty much fucked for now. It's a pretty tired old hard drive. Its internal memory said that it had 68,000, I, th I think it was 68,000 hours of use. It's like seven and a half years. So basically, some, uh, some company, actually I know what company, because I also found that evidently Seagate made and shipped this only for one company and that's EMC they had such a high demand that they, they just had them build their own hard drive so this came from EMC and if they bought this in 1998 and they used it for seven years that means they would have this would have been running from 1998 to 2005 so this is a pretty tired old hard drive the there's some internal error codes that it was giving it gave internal disk check error and it gave internal RAM error, so on this circuit board, the RAM chip might have issues. The firmware is okay. I could not low level. I, I could not finish the low level formatting, so it doesn't know how much capacity it has. That's one of the main reasons why it doesn't come up in Windows XP Disk Manager. So it's annoying. I I don't think it's really that easily fixable. I don't know if it is fixable. It might be one of those things where I just have to find a different one because Weird Stuff Warehouse may have another one of these drives. It would be really nice to take one of these drives and turn it into a big gyroscope. But probably the better bet would be with these 23 gigabyte ones since Weird Stuff Warehouse has more of these and also 
because this is like the biggest full height hard drive I've ever seen. So it would be kind of a shame to rip that one up. But these, they have like three or four of them. So I'm, I might, I may grab some, some of these. We can make a big gyroscope out of them. It's such a cool drive too. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!